in Sunday school today, we had 21, and the Sunday school offering was $1,215. Uh, and I didn't have a fumble over here. Just tell me the birthdays are. I know one. Uh, there she is over there.
here this morning. <laughs> Today we start the week of prayer for Tennessee Missions, and I hope you picked up a brochure and an envelope in the back. If you didn't, you can get one. Uh, the Golden Offering supports many good ministries, but one that I think is very, very good is Disaster Relief. And in fact, this week in our state paper, the Baptist and Reflector, there was a two-page article about our men that worked in the flooding areas of Kentucky. And the title of this article is Tennessee Baptist Disaster Relief Teams Were God Sent to Victims in Kentucky. I want to read you just a little tab of what it says. This one lady says, we didn't know what to do and we really could not get any help. Bates heard about the Tennessee Baptist Disaster Relief Volunteers who were staying at Montgomery Baptist Church and contacted them for help. She says, I know it was God, to Him be the glory. And these men and women, it tells more about it all and all, but these men and women work really, really hard, but the result, they also share Jesus as they go. And what happened as a result of that, 18 people came to know the Lord from the teams that were there. So I think I urge you to give to the Golden State Offering because this is one of the ministries that it helps support. And we're going to watch now about our disaster relief team working in Waverly. In the Lord's house this morning, good to see each one. And uh, uh, we, we've got a number of prayer needs we need to be. Barbara Bakley and Pat both are sick. Barbara's got COVID and Pat, I think, tested last night. I had heard it was quite a while. But being around Barbara, she probably got it too. So it'll be a bunch of prayer for them. Uh, Ed Hunt's surgery rescheduled for this Thursday. So don't forget that and lift him up in your prayers as well. David and Randy, Deanne, they took Deanne to the hospital last night. Deanne was in, having a seizure. She was unresponsive uh, for the most part. She, and last night at, at the hospital, I understand she got a little bit combative when they were trying to move her to ICU. And uh, they would not let Debbie stay until Debbie came home. And Debbie passed out in the bathroom last night at home. Uh, so. Debbie really needs our prayers right now. She is taking this hard. She said, that's my baby. But, uh, you know, we talk about prayer, and I'm going to be preaching on prayer this morning. We make our requests known unto God, and God miraculously gives us what we ask for, right? God always gives us better than we ask for. We need to understand that. God does answer our prayers. may not be the way we want them answered, but God does answer our prayers. Uh, so we need to lift David and Randy both up in our prayers and everybody else in our church family uh, that has needs. Ricky's doing great. He's taking orders now, right? Two of us. Me and uh, continue to lift each one of them up. Any other prayer needs that I need to remember? I'm going to gate Lisa on this morning. <laughs> Kayla, we need to remember her. She's coming along. Anyone else? I just got no energy. I can't get up. I don't have the energy I used to have either. Uh, I don't have any. <laughs> no, hers, hers is really bad. Hers is really bad. Let's go, Lord, and pray together. <laughs> Father, we do thank you for your blessings <laughs> upon us. Father, so many times you bless us and we don't... We kind of take it for granted, but Father, help us to give thanks unto you for your uh, graciousness upon us, Father, that you walk with us each day. 
Father, I do pray for prayer needs and pray for Barbara and Pat that you would give them healing. Father, we get them back into the Lord's house and pray for Ed as he faces surgery this week. Father, may your hand be upon him. May you guide the surgeons. It's amazing today what they can do with heart surgery. They're not going to open up his chest, but they're going to do it as they would do a cat. And Father, we thank you for that. We pray that everything continues to go well. Father, we pray for Debbie and Randy and Deanne. And Father, you just be with them. Father, thank you that your answer is on the way. And we give you praise and honor and glory for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sandy, turn Next Sunday, not this Sunday, but uh, next Sunday, is the shower for both of and Shelby. Bubba Hunt and Shelby Capel, their wedding shower will be at, over the fellowship hall from 2 to 4 next Sunday. Let's turn to hymn number 606, The Way of the Cross Leads Home. Let's sing all three verses, 606. <laughs>
thank you this morning that blessed us giving us strength to heal. We pray now that you will continue to bless our worship. Bless Miss Sandy as she leads and Linda as she prays. Please guide us all. Bless this offering, Father, that might be used for your glory. Bless Brother Lynn's message. Guide and direct us. Bless these in our church who are uh, sick, those who are probably in the hospital now. Probably with Brother Ed this week, guide, direct, and surgery for him. Give us what we pray, or in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
sanctuary. We stand and sing, prepare our hearts to receive God's message this morning. 588. Chapter 5, 
James gives us the story of Elijah in the Old Testament. What did Elijah do in his prayer life? Is it Elijah, the prophet of God, who prayed that it would not rain on the earth? And it didn't rain for a number of years. And then after the experience at Mount Carmel, when God answered by fire on that place, Elijah began to pray for rain in the very next chapter. And after a period of praying, rain came. As Elijah, the Bible says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now let me ask this question. Is our prayer life at the realm of effective and fervency in our lives? That, that's the plane where God wants us to be. That's where God wants us to go. In Luke chapter 18, God gives us this parable. And I want you to notice verse 1. The key to this parable is hanging at the door right on the first verse. That men are always to pray and not to faint. One of the key elements of understanding prayer is that there are sometimes God says, I'm going to put you on hold. How many of you have ever called your credit card company or something like that, and they put you on hold. And you hold, and you hold, and you hold, and you get frustrated. And it's difficult for us when God puts us on hold. But delay sometimes is part of God's answer for us in our lives. So I want us to look at this parable and walk through it. Notice, first of all, the experience that is recognizable here. I want you to look at the characters in this. We have a judge. He is described as a man which feared not God, nor regarded men. He's an unjust judge. Now, how would you describe the widow? She is a whining, nagging widow. Now, let me ask you a question. There are contrasts drawn in this parable. God does not want us in our prayer life to be whining and nagging about our requests. For the simple reason, God is not like the judge in this passage of Scripture. God is a loving, caring, compassionate God who wants us to bring our requests to Him. And the Bible says that He will speedily answer our prayers. Although in time he may say, well, wait a little while for that. And we don't like to wait. When you get to Walmart and you get in the checkout line and there are a whole lot of people that check out line, and I understand Walmart down here is going to have all self-checkout. In other words, you're not going to have a real person check you out anymore. But you even get in the self-checkout line and there are a whole bunch of people in front of you. You get a little bit impatient. God, why don't you give me my answer right now? We want it done today. We don't want it done tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. We don't like the luck. And so that's part of this. But there's also the dependence. This woman is an interesting character. Someone had cheated her. Someone had defrauded her. She has no husband to stand up for her. She has no money with which to fight. And so she is dependent upon this judge. That he will hear her case and vindicate her. Now, if you look at the story, this woman at first is ignored by this judge. She walks into the courtroom, and the judge calls this case over here, and she calls that case over there. He ignores her. But she continues to come day in and day out. 
somewhere down the line. The judge walks into court one day and there she is again. And, and, and the judge says in this passage of Scripture, verse 5, Yet because this little troubleth me, I will change my mind and avenge her, lest she continue to wear me out. Persistence. She was persistent in bringing her request. We need to be persistent with God. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. But we can need, here, here's the key, folks. You need to keep on asking and keep on coming and keep on putting your petitions for God. Be dependent upon Him. Now, here's a, here's a difficulty for us. We like to be <coughs> independent <coughs> in our life. We like to do it ourselves. <clears throat> but there comes a point in life where you need to realize there are some things you can't handle. Amen. <laughs> so if we can't handle them, then who can? I. God can. Nobody else could take care of this woman's needs, so he, she kept coming to the judge day in and day out until finally he relented and gave in. Now, God's not like that, though. God hears our petitions from day one. And He starts the ball rolling to get our petitions met. But that comes the waiting part. Sometimes we don't, we want it, we want it yesterday. And God doesn't necessarily answer yesterday. Now, what, what kind of answers does God give us? When you make your request made unto God, what are the answers that God gives to you? Wait a little longer. Sometimes God says, yes, here it is. You got it. Sometimes God says, no, wait a little while longer. In fact, God is saying basically this. I've got something better for you. Our prayers many times are selfish prayers. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm going to say, but let me say it very clearly. We pray for healing. We pray for healing from the end. Let me give you an affirmation of Scripture. God will heal by the end. may not be down here, but it will be up there. And, and therefore, that's the better part of what God has for us. Folks, don't get impatient with the God who loves us and cares for us in life. Don't be the whining and nagging woman. But be understand that God wants to bless us in life and all that we do. Amen? You know, there are things in life that we cannot do. I cannot save my loved ones. I have a responsibility to witness to it. But I can't say that. I can't heal my loved ones. I can't even heal my own body. So I have to be dependent upon God for what God can do in life. Adrian Rogers once said this. He said, prayerlessness is a spirit of independence from God. In other words, when we don't pray, we're saying, God, I don't need you. Those little things in life you think you can take care of, yeah, you can take care of them. You usually mess them up real good. We need to understand, we need God in all that we do in life. Amen? Amen. But then he said, well, you've got, you got to wait a little while. The principle of waiting in the Lord is re repeated throughout Scripture. Do you realize that the word wait appears in the Psalms 22 times? Just alone in the book of the Psalms, 22 times God says wait. 
It's an undeniable fact that I, many times I request, maybe immediately answered, but many times God says, wait a little while. And that's the problem. We don't understand the wait a little while. I'm a diabetic. My doctor told me one time, he said, you can sin ever once in a while. He just didn't tell me how long ever once in a while was. And God doesn't tell us how long we have to wait. But then we get impatient. But I've also found out that when we wait and God gives us His answer, there's joy in the presence of Almighty God. I want you to notice again the encouragement here. Go back with me to this passage of Scripture. Look at that first verse. He said, He spake a parable unto them, unto this end. He's speaking about prayer. But it's not the prayer that we ought to be the wine and nagging, won't widow, nor go to an unjust judge. But notice what he says in verse 1. That men are always to pray. Always to pray? Why does God tell us all? In fact, the Bible says over in the epistles, pray without ceasing. I may even pray going down the highway in the car. Just don't bow your head, close your eyes. That would not be a good thing to do. A lot of times when I'm on Interstate 40, I do a lot of praying. When people are cutting you off and running in front of you, go ahead and put it on wide angle, Brother Joe, so you won't be continue to get up and down. I'm good. But he says here to pray always, and then he says not to faint, not to lose heart. Because he goes on to the last verse, and makes this statement, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find this kind of faith on the earth. What faith? The faith of this widow woman who continued to go back to this judge until she was avenged. Don't lose heart with God. God doesn't operate on our timepieces. Amen? Amen. You better be glad of that. But God does bless us in many, many different ways. When I was growing up, went to high school, they had a cheerleader squad. And at first I thought how silly it is to have a bunch of girls running around with pom-poms, trying to cheer on 11 guys out on the football field. That just doesn't make sense. But you know, the older I've gotten, the more I realize that there is a need for encouragement in life for all of us. We need somebody to cheer us on. That's what Jesus is doing in this parable. He's trying to encourage us to pray. Not give up, not faint, not lose heart. And that's what God wants us to do in all that we do in life. But I want you to notice this exercise here. Andrew Murray has written a number of books. I've got a number of books by him. But he wrote a book to the sea. The title of it is With Christ in the School of Prayer. With Christ in the School of Prayer. Murray says in this book that prayer is something we learn over time and prayer is something the Lord must teach us. God teaches us the persistence of prayer. If this lady had not continued to go, what would have happened after day one if she said, this judge is not going to do me any good, I'm not going back to him. What would happen? She would not have been avenged. Her case would not have been vindicated. 
But she goes back the second day. She goes back the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day. I don't know how long she went, but she got to the point where she was wearing this judge out. I mean, this judge ain't no dumb judge. He, the Bible says he did not regard man. He is unjust, but he understands something. If I don't do something here, she is going to continue to come back and wear me out. The thing is, folks, God is not like that. You don't have to nag God today. Right? God is willing and wanting to meet our needs. We just don't understand how it operates sometimes. But God wants to bless us in all that we do in life. Persistence must be the aim of our prayer life. Another saintly sage of years is a man by the name of George Mueller. Uh, Mueller served in England as a pastor, uh, ran an orphanage, he basically operated solely upon faith. But Mueller writes in his diary in 1844, he writes this. In November of 1844, I began to pray for the conversion of five individuals. I prayed every day for that conversion without in intermission. And then he goes on to say, 18 months elapsed before the first of the five was saved. Eighteen more months passed before the second person was converted. <clears throat> Mueller said that he continued to pray, and after a period of some six years, the third one was converted. So he had five, he's down to two now. When were those two saved? Well after Mueller's death. But they were eventually saved. How many of us would have said, wait a minute, Lord, I want this request today. I don't want to wait 18, 20, 30 years. How many of you would want to wait that long? Raise your hand. But if God knows a whole lot more than we do, we've got to trust Him regardless. Amen. God wants us to understand that. So persistence in prayer is needed in life, but also prevailing prayer. Say what you will about this will. She accomplished her purpose. She got the answer that she'd been seeking. Now let me ask you a question. Could that be said of our prayer lives? Do you get the things you prayed for? Do you prevail in prayer? When was the last time you saw God answer prayer in your life? Prevailing prayer is possible. But there's a key to it. This widow truly believed that if she came long enough, the judge would avenge her. That's what he talks about when he talks about faith. She kept on, kept on, kept on, kept on, kept on. And God gave her her request. Could it be that the reason for so many of us have been experiencing prevailing prayer is that so few, few of us really truly have the faith to believe that God will answer our prayers. Let me, let me give you an illustration here. You, you need a hundred dollars for something. Is that too hard for God to do? No. You need healing from cancer. Is that too hard for God to do? In other words, when I was in seminary, the professor asked us one occasion, can God build a stone so big that he can't lift it? Now, that, that doesn't happen. 
So there's nothing outside the realm of what God can do. So God wants us to prevail and persist in our prayer life. When do we stop praying? Keep on praying. Prevailing prayer believes that somewhere, somehow, some way, sometime, God is going to answer our request. Let me say that again. Prevailing prayer believes that somewhere, somehow, some way, sometime, God's going to answer our prayers. Do we believe that? Great missionary Adoram Judson said this, I've never prayed sincerely for anything, but it came at some time, somehow, some shape in life. That's the faith we've got to have. We've got to believe that in the storehouse of heaven, God has every petition, every request that we have already answered. But we've got to go to Him in persistent prayer in life and see God bless in many ways. Now, again, as I've said before, sometimes, all the time, let me put it that way, all the time, we don't know how God operates. Because He's God. Amen? Amen. But the God of heaven wants us to come to Him. Wants us to meet, say, say, Lord, this is my need. I am dependent upon you. And I have faith that you're going to answer it someday, somehow. And it just like with the, Andrew Murray, or not Murray, the, what, George Mueller who prayed. Two of those guys got saved after he died. He did not see that answer to prayer. Well, yeah, he did. He saw it from heaven. But God wants us to continue. That we ought always to pray, not faint. So we need to pray for our, the needs of our church family. <clears throat> One writing on our hearts today is Deanne and Debbie. You need to pray for Ed. You need to pray for Barbara and Pat and so many others. All the needs right here this morning, Miss Yvonne, back uh, here. All of us. All of us need it. We need to pray for each other. You know, there's going to become a glorious day when we're going to begin to see God bless us beyond measure. And we're going to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blessings for us. Let's bow together as we pray. <clears throat> Father, sometimes, as I've said earlier, prayer is not easy. But Father, you tell us to be persistent in prayer, that we ought always to pray and not lose heart. And Father, sometimes that's difficult when we don't see the answer come in an immediate fashion. But Father, you tell us that sometimes we've got to wait for the abundance of blessing that you're going to give us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Father, for your grace upon us. God, as Father, as we worship you, as we go from this place, that, Father, you begin to touch lives all around. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The Sandy's going to come lead us. What number? 414. 414. Let's find you him. Turn to that number. Stand with us as we pray. As we sing.
going to pray. He's going to, one day, you're going to say, thank you, Lord, for your blessings of us. Amen? Amen? In fact, right now, God's already blessed us today. Thank you, Lord. You, you got Amen. up this morning and you were in God's house. God blessed you. Amen. And give Him praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Let's bow together as we pray. But Mark Worlds, would you lead us with sir?